Ladies and gentlemen, I have just been noticed by Drop Senpai. So Drop reached out and asked if I can check out their enter keyboard as well as a set of keycaps. And worry not, I'm not paid to say anything, so it's all my opinion. That said, let's get started and look at the keyboard itself, which comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable, a keycap puller, and a manual sheet. Now the drop enter is of course drop's entry line keyboard, which comes in the black you see here, white and silver, as well as this muted greenish olive color. The enter uses a TKL layout, and uses OEM profile double shot PPT shine through keycaps. You also get a choice of two different types of key switches. I personally got the Halo Trues, which are a tactile switch, but you can also get Gateron Yellows, which are a linear switch. The keycaps are made of a nice PPT plastic that has a matte texture that's relatively thick and they are double shot. While the build is pretty nice, the finish could be a little bit better. Can I get it an F in the chat? Now as for the case of the drop enter itself, it uses a plastic top piece, which is while black, it looks more of like a very dark grayish color, almost like a space gray or something. As for the rest of the case, it is definitely black and is made of aluminum with a nice matte texture. Here on the bottom are four rubber feet as well as some height adjusters. Along the back, you'll notice that the case is mostly made of aluminum and you'll also find a USB-C port at the top left hand side. Along all sides of the keyboard, unlike the rest of the top case, the sides are all nicely polished, which I think is kind of a nice little detail, giving the keyboard a bit more personality, especially since the personality won't come out in the LEDs as they will only come in white. It is an entry board after all. Now something I did notice about the LEDs, which I'll show you in this darker lighting so you have a better idea of them, is that they aren't exactly white through the keycaps. The LEDs themselves are white, but they don't use a colder spectrum of white that other keyboards use. And it seems that because of this, along with the keycap material, it comes off as a more yellowish off-white, which I like, but I know not everyone will. All right, now time for a sound test with this keyboard at stock to see what $90 can get you with this entry-level keyboard. if you can hear that pinging. Not bad for an entry board, but let's see if we can make it better. Now you're not exactly supposed to take apart the board, but I'm gonna go <laughs> And I know some of you guys out there are wondering about the upgradability and modifiability of this board, and well, so am I. Now then, after removing all the keycaps, you'll notice there are a myriad of screws all over the place, which we're gonna have to remove. And mind you, they are torque screws, so you make sure you have the right screwdriver. That said, something I did notice about the top casing is that it went completely around the switches, so this part should come off with the rest of the top case. With all the screws removed, you will need a guitar pick or some kind of prying tool to pry off the little plastic tabs keeping this top case down. Now here's where things get a little bit dicey, as the top case is pretty flexible and feels like it can break, so you have to be very careful when moving the top case left and right to unlatch the plastic tabs that are on the little middle parts. Due to these tabs, you can't just muscle the top case off. This central part's pretty thin, so it's very easy to break if you do so. It is plastic after all. Anyway, once that's settled, you'll notice that there is a metal top plate that the switches are attached to, so that's good to see. I did have what seems to be like manufacturing scratches on my top plate, but this is going to be covered by the plastic top piece, so this is sort of a non-issue. You'll never really see it. Anyway, after removing the PCB, I did find a plastic skeleton on the inside of the casing, which is probably there to keep all the components from touching the bottom of the casing on the inside, probably to prevent any electrical shortages or something. Back to the PCB, everything is soldered on, so you're gonna have some soldering seals to take everything out, and especially if you want to lube all the switches, and especially the springs to remove that spring ping. But honestly, most of you guys are probably just gonna do the bare minimum like I will, and just lube the steps. But we still have to desolder the stabilized switches to even access the stabilizers at all. Once we got them all removed, we are going to have to clip them by basically cutting off these little hanging thin appendages, which will make key presses less mushy. Now you will need some dielectric grease to re-lube these bars, because they did come pre lube but not very well, and what this will do is it'll prevent stab rattle, which I do recommend you test by putting it back into the board with a keycap, and this is to make sure that there is no stab rattle before you re-solder the entire board. After stab mods, something I like to do is putting foam in my board, because it acts as a sound dampener inside the keyboard by preventing reverberations inside the board when you're typing. Personally, I like to use contact zip and fit shelf liner, because it just makes things easier to cut since I don't have to use scissors, but you could just use craft phone and even felt. Do be mindful of the thickness of the material, because that does play a factor in when you rebuild your keyboard, as mine was a bit too thick and kind of pushed the top plate up, which didn't affect the performance, but aesthetically it's kind of me. Now with the internal mods that most of you guys probably aren't ever going to do out of the way, let's talk about some modification and personalization that anyone can do, and that's with keycaps, which Drop has graciously sent me to also show you guys. These are the Drop Skylight Series keycap set, which comes in several different colors, link in description, and I personally got the Valiant color set. They're all durable, double shot PPT keycaps, and they are shine through keycaps, so they will be lit up by LEDs. These keycaps are of an OEM profile and use Cherry MX stems and will fit most keyboards out there, even having extra keys in case you're using 
using full-size keyboards, but do be careful of certain keyboards that may have non-standard bottom rows, as they might not be compatible. Now then, this is how it looks like on the drop enter keyboard. It looks quite nice. I love the way it dresses it up. But a Valiant said, due to the reds, it really does complement the warmer colors that are brought by the LEDs. It's like one of those little happy accidents, you know? Now that we've finished doing basic mods to the keyboard, Let's see how it sounds, and do mind there might still be some spring ping because we didn't really lube the springs, but maybe it's better. Let's see. Okay, not bad. It was an overall improvement in terms of sound and feel, and especially feel for stabilized keys, because just having non rattly stabilized keys is nice. The ping was reduced ever so slightly, which is nice, and the key sounds just sound a little bit different thanks to the dampening of like the foam. Some people prefer the sound without foam, some people prefer with it. It's really just up to you. Now, when it comes to like the modifiability of this board, you can go further and lube the switches if you want, but you will have to, you know, desolder everything. And when it comes to actually like the ease of disassembling it, it is a bit more on the difficult side. So if you don't know what you're doing, be very careful. And even if you know what you're doing, you still have to be very careful, especially with like the plastic top case piece, because it can be a little fragile and flimsy, especially in the middle section where it's like around the keys, as that part is especially thin and it does have plastic tabs hooking it in. So you're gonna have to be very careful when you're trying to remove it. Just know to be careful when you're trying to remove that little middle section, all right? I mean, this keyboard wasn't really meant to be taken apart anyway, but you know, since you can, well, you could, but should you? Really depends, because honestly, stock, it's not bad. It's really up to you. Regardless of whether or not the keyboard is stock or modded, it's still pretty good for gaming. Being a TKL format, it has basically all the keys you need for most games out there, so you don't have to worry about missing some keys when you play games. With the Halo 2s on this board, I felt it was a very good experience to game with, because of the tactile bump being higher on the Switch, responding well in fast gameplay. Mind you, Switch choice is a very personal thing. I just simply prefer having a higher tactile bump on my Switches when I'm playing games especially. I personally just like having that feedback in my fingers so I know when I've pressed the button. But hey, if you don't like tactiles, you can always go for the gatter on yellows which are a linear switch in case you're into that switch feels all about your preference and only you can figure that out overall for $90 as an entry-level board I think it's a pretty good buy if you consider the build of the keyboard as well as the build of the keycaps being double shot PPT plastic keycaps as well as pretty good quality switches though you only get two choices of switches so you know do keep that in mind if you're into silent switches or whatever you're not gonna find them here but for those of you or most of you honestly you're gonna be looking at like tactiles and linears for the most part, and the ones that you get on here are both pretty good choices. Also, if you wanna dress up your board a little bit more, you can also use drop skylight keycaps, which are of the same quality keycaps that you will be getting with this board stock, just in, you know, different colors. It's all about choices and whatnot, you know? The drop skylight keycap set will cost you an extra $45, and honestly, at this price, that's actually about right, considering the build of it being PPT plastic keycaps would shine through. Now, for those of you who are really heavy into modding, you probably aren't even looking at this board at this point, because it is an entry-level board, and if you're at that point, you're probably getting something much more expensive, because that's just how the keyboard world is. You know, just spending $300 on just the case. But I digress. If you want the drop keyboard, I will leave a link in the description to Drop's website. You can go pick one up. And if you want their Skylight keycap series, I will also leave a link for that in the description. And also because I know a lot of you guys are going to ask about it, I'm also going to leave in the description a link to the foam that I use. But I don't recommend that foam with this if that's what you're planning to do. I would prefer you use something that's thinner than that, like craft foam or even felt. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got with this keyboard today. So I hope this has helped you out with your purchase decisions. And I guess I will see you next time.